Hi, I'm Greg Ellis. We're down at the Carp site, it's Horseshoe Lake today. 62 acres, full of weed, good stock of fish. It's a lake I've never seen before, and we're going to have a walk about, hopefully find some. I'm going to give you five tips on summer fishing and our target venues, especially ones like this, blind. So a good set of Polaroids, that's the main thing. So we're going to go on our walk, see what we can find, hopefully get amongst a few. Let's go. Everywhere you look, there's coats diving. I think we're only going to see them if they jump out. Jump out and give us a wave. Well, I found a swim that I fancy. I've not seen a fish here yet, but it's, it's an area that I'll come back to if I don't see anything. I like to have a big view. I'm only here for one night. Usually I'm getting there for a weekend session. So I'll choose an area with a big view and I can move the following day. But in this case, we've got one night. I fancy this swim if I don't see anything because it's central zone. I know there's a swim opposite. It's the only swim I know the name of. So it's obviously a popular one, Winter Point. It's always got people in there. It's always got bait gang in there. So there's always fish in this sort of area. So I'm not too far from the main sort of zone where they get fed regular. That's one top tip. But we're gonna carry on walking, hopefully find something, because ideally when you've got one night, you need to find the fish to catch them. Here, it's ideal if I've got two or three nights, there's always fish in this sort of zone, and I can bait them, bait for them, and wait for them sort of thing. They're in that area, but with one night, it might not pay off. So we're gonna carry on looking, and hopefully, we'll find a couple. <laughs> far end, it's a northerly wind pushing. I did fancy an area, like I said just now, but as I've walked up to this far corner, wind's pushing in nicely, nice bit of weed, there's a bit of fizzing. Didn't know whether they were tench or not, but as we're standing here looking, nice chestnut brown mirror, probably a 20, come out. So uh, yeah, the rules on this lake, you can't bucket a swim, you have to bring your bivvy or your rods. So that's what I've got with me. I'm gonna drop it in the swim, I'm gonna go back to the motor, get the kit, and hopefully, with a stealthy approach, we'll get one of these horseshoe mirrors. Right, we've just got back to the swim. I'm set up right far back. I've got my avid benchmark light bed. It's uh, swims like this, and when you're fishing big lakes, you've got to be mobile. So I'm not going to um, set up the bivy and all that just yet. I'm going to get the rods out. What I'm going to do, I've got braid on the main line at the minute. I need to change that to mono, because you're not allowed braid on here. But I'm going to cut my leader off, tie a lead on, have a little lead about because it's really weedy, I can see it on the surface. So I don't want to fish blind, I still need to fill the lead down. So I'm going to do it with braid, then I'll change over to mono. But before that, I'll catapult a few boilies out, because I can still see this fish here, and try and spook them off with bait instead of a four ounce lead on their heads. But yeah, the chances are, even just leading about, they might push off. But if I do catch one, which um, I'm hoping to, the fish will probably move further down this bank. So if I set up the bivy and all that, it's going to restrict me from moving. I might see a couple here, but the majority have gone down there. So with that setting up, I'll probably just sleep under the stars and I can move with them if they do move off. So let's get the rod sorted, have a little feel about, see what we've got. That's the one. That's the one, mate. That's the daddy. Yeah, watch this. So that V in the trees. Ah, it's gone through weed. That's different there. I don't know whether that's going through weed before. They'll do. So I've got two wraps the same, less disturbance. I'm going to wrap it up, change my braid, mono, braid over to mono, get set up and get a rig out there. Oof. 
four and a half. Short range, mate. Lovely. <laughs> Right, we're set up in the swim, got my rods out, found a couple of spots, nice and clear, only four, four and a half wraps each rod, so to put it in perspective, we've got the map here, we've got all this water, 62 acres, and we're positioned here in swim 46, which is in a bay, and literally on four and a half rod lengths out, so we've got all this water, winter point's done fish this morning, we see matey get his uh, net out this morning, I did fancy the big double, 31's done a fish. I walk past and I see um see his tripod up and he's mat and that. So that area has done fish. But I've opted to come up here. There's no lines. It's probably the furthest walk. Well it is the furthest walk from the car park. And it's pretty much there's no lines up here. That's a big thing I do in my fishing. Line pressure. I normally only fish two rods, regardless of the size, whether you can use three or four rods on that lake. I'm normally only two rods because I'm a big believer in line pressure. The less lines the better you can have better results. So if you're worried about fishing big lakes, at the minute, although you've got all this water, this lake is only this big to me. There's enough fish in here to only concentrate on this area. So all this is void. So if you turn up to a venue and it's big like this place, and it's a bit daunting to you, then think about sections of the lake. And if you find the fish like we have today, Location is the main thing. So once you found the fish, that lake is only as big as your swim, basically. Whether you're in a bay, in a corner, 62 acres has just turned into half an acre. So look at it that way. And it's not as daunting as it may be. Another thing, when I'm targeting a new venue, local knowledge is good. Doing a bit of research, whether that's reading about previous sessions from other anglers or watching them on YouTube, that's all good, but it's out of date. So you'll come here, it could have been a year previously, that video was made so it ain't right now in your session so i tend to not not go into all that before i before i come to a venue i like to come here not know much and i spoke to a couple of bailiffs this morning when i first got here they told me an area and it was near that winter point and swim opposite that has done fish and obviously i've seen it with my own eyes they've got one of them's pulling the fish out of the water so straight away that's like i need to be there and a lot of people they might turn up and go right that's it bucket me swim there or put my bivy there and then not even walk the rest of the lake they've got a top swim but i've walked along this bank got to this corner and there's literally nobody here at all and there's a lot of fish so try try to steer clear of that and also i don't like to go into people's swims if then if they're not on the main footpath and they're not outside the bivvies i'll never ever walk into their into their space you know i don't invade their privacy i like to leave them to it if if they're outside wrapping up or whatever then I'll say hello and if they want to talk, they'll talk, but I don't go out my way to see them. And at the minute, the only people I've seen as I've walked around were a couple of bailiffs. So that tells me the anglers on here, they don't really venture about in this corner area. Probably because you've got 62 acres of water and you've got a little corner and they feel restricted. So that's a massive edge. If you can go somewhere that's quiet with less lines, the carp, that's heaven to carp. So when I've got one night ahead of me, I want to go where the carp are. I would, if I've got a three nights or whatever, I would tend to fish this open open bit of water and get something going. Maybe try and build up a hit of fish with a lot of bait. But I'm here for one night. The fish are here, so I'm here. That's my best chance of catching in this short space of time. So if you are on a big lake, don't neglect the corners and try not to listen to anyone. Just go with your own flow and see what you can see with your own eyes. Your own eyes are the best eyes. I don't, I don't tend to listen to other people. And if someone's seen a fish show, I take it with a pinch of salt. I want to see a fish show with my own eyes, like I have today, and I'm happy where I am. Hopefully, it's paid off. Another thing as well, the wind direction on here at the minute is a northwesterly. So on the map, we've got a northerly up here. Well, north, east, southwest. Some people, even to this day, I've met people and they think a northerly, because the end's at the top, it's blowing towards the end. But it's not, it's blowing from the north, so it's coming down. So a northwesterly, we're coming straight into this corner. So I always used to carry a compass, but now my phone's got a compass. I'll get there straight away. I'll get to the lake. If I fish the lake regular, I know the place. I'll know when I'm at home what way the wind's going to be. But when I get to a lake, a new lake, I'll get the compass out and I'll see what wind's what. So here we've got a northwest today, and that's going to be blowing here today and tomorrow. And I'm going home tomorrow. So we've got a constant flow of wind, and you can see now it's trickling in nicely. And it's looking really good for a bite. Right, another tip that I do in my angling is to stay organised. Basically, 
I'm gonna get my rods out quick now. So I need to know where everything is. This is the Avid compound rucksack. Basically, these compartments on the front come off. Now Velcro there and they slide out. So that there is my buzz bars, buzzers and all that. So they're easy to hand. In here I've got tackle. These also come off obviously. Leads and other bits. And then we take these off. Normally a rucksack, you're opening from the top and you've got to try and get down to find everything. But this opens up so everything's on hand. Some more tackle, camera, more leads. So yeah, staying organised, it's a lot quicker. Also these, with the uh, rod sleeves, these can clip onto the rod sleeves. So if you only want to do a quick day session, you can take your tackle bag off your rucksack, stick it on your rod sleeve. All right, I'll talk to you about my baiting approach now. I've got two rods out, and literally I've got about three baits around each rod, mainly because they was here this morning when I found them fizzing up and stuff, but now they're on the surface, the sun's out. It's not looking too good for a bite at the minute. And if I put a lot of bait out now, I want to put about 10 pouchfuls around each spot because when I turned up this morning, they was fizzing, they was obviously feeding in the area. And I don't want to bombard it with bait now and spook them off. So I'm trying to get a bite just with a couple of handfuls and it's not paying off. So this evening I'll put some more bait in and I'll use the main line, Magic Cell. It's my go-to everywhere. And I put whole baits out. I normally fish big pits like this. So you've got a bit of depth. It's normally quite a big uh, ripple in the water. So fishing them crushed or halved or whatever, it's probably not getting on my spot. So whole baits, it's a big fish tactic and it's paid off everywhere I go. My hook baits will be the diamond white pop-ups, which are white obviously, but amongst the cell, the cell looks pretty washed out within five minutes. So that'll go a bit lighter. And this white pop-up is a little bit different to this feed around it, but not too much. It's not blatant. So the lakes are fish, they're normally low stocked and anything more blatant than that can probably do you more damage than good. Spook carp off, etc. So that's the plan of action today. Not a lot of bait now. As the sun goes down, we'll put some more bait in, put a white pop-up over the top and hopefully we'll get a bite in the morning or tonight. You might see my baiting approach and what I use is so simple and it is. I've literally got a fish right over me right hand spot at the minute. But I've literally got one rig, which is a Ronnie rig, stiff boom. I use that because a lot of lakes I fish have got crayfish in there and I like the resetting properties. But I use cell with a white diamond white popper over the top or a white rubber if there's crayfish on a helicopter setup and I'll take that everywhere. But if you've got confidence in your rig and your baits, that's all you need, right? I used to get lost in my fishing. I used to change my bait if I blanked, change from this rig to that rig. And if you're out there and you're especially new to this sport, then it will fry your brains. Just find a bait you're confident in, find a rig you're confident in. A helicopter setup is my go-to preferred method. Once you've got all them, all you've got to do is find the fish like we have now. And that is the main thing, right? Carp fishing is so easy, it's simple if you let it be. If you listen to what you read here, what you see there, this rig's the best, that bait's the best, then it'll really, really get in your brain and it can ruin your fishing and definitely ruin your catch rate. Comments on the left, but the right hand rod, I want to go a little bit further out. When I was feeling the lead down earlier, I didn't want to make too much disturbance, but I could feel the line going through the weed where I've got a braided main line for leading about with. The spot was all right, but it was quite close to the weed. So I want to go a little bit further to the right, where the majority of the fish have been showing and fizzing this morning. And there's a bigger area, better drop. So I can get like a 10 patch full to sell on that area and try and get something going tonight or in the morning. So one more little lead, just to double check. Oh, that's a dream light. So yeah, now we put the magic in. Obviously I've just had a lead about, about 10 leads. So anything that was in the zone, there's still fish about, I've spoked. So I might as well put the bait out on this rod now. 
why I can, because when the fish come back, which they will, I don't want to be doing this and bombarding it once the dust has settled. So this is going to hopefully bring me a bite. Putting a few baits out earlier, then the sun come up and yeah, any chance of a bite was void. But we're preparing now for the night ahead and early morning. And there's enough fish up here to give them a bit of bait. Especially the cell, it's digestible. Pass it easily, you can't put enough out. So, this one's quite a big area, I'll put quite a bit on this. One night, you might think that's a lot, but it's really not. I think there's a good stock of fish in here. So we'll soon get through that. All right, let's wrap it up, see what we got. Six and a bit. So yeah, not far at all. Get that fluff off the line. Or at least feel some sort of drop. Yeah, you can still feel some. yeah, I did on that left hand rod, but that's just now on that braid felt good, really good. So I should definitely feel it. Slightly then, say that. And we're going to go tight lines. Both rods tight. Do you know why? Yeah. I'm in weed. I'm going over a weed bed. If I have it slack, it's just going to sink in it more, isn't it? All right, this is my go-to rig. The Ronnie, nothing special about this. Simple as you like. 40 pounds stiff boom, average fluoro, outline fluoro, a size four armor rock hook, which is barbless because it's the rules on here, it's no, bar no barbed hooks, barbless only. I've got a couple of bits from Avid, which are new to the range. It's a Ronnie swivel, also a small Ronnie sleeve, which fits nicely, and a super grip bead. That's set up on a helicopter setup. I normally use a lead core leader and Braided mainline, but on here, braids banned, leaders are banned, so I'm using the 18 pound outline fluoro camo, which is the strongest in the range. There's a lot of weed on here, and I've joined that with a four ounce lead tied on with a weak link. So if that was to get in the weed, that would snap off and we'll get the fish freely through the weed. If you keep the lead on, chances are you'll have no chance of getting it back. So that will come off, and I'm in direct contact with the fish. But that's as simple as it gets. You don't need to overcomplicate things. That boom, if it gets picked up by a crayfish or a bird, it resets, lovely. And that diamond white amongst some cell is a deadly combo. It does me well everywhere I go. about traveling light, stay mobile, the benchmark light bed chair, super lightweight. I use this for my summer fishing, purely for the fact it's light on the barrel, I can push it about, big pits and stuff. And this is me for the night. I've got my rucksack, all the compound luggage there, and a barrel. So if I see a fish show, I'm not gonna move, but 
if I do catch a fish, hopefully, and they drift off further down the bank, I can get on it. I can move with them. So I've got both rods out now. Nice bit of bait around each spot, and I'm quietly confident for a bite tonight. But if it's not going to happen tonight, I'm sure when I walked around earlier, about 10 o'clock, they were fizzing. They were definitely feeding in this area. So first light onwards, maybe. But I'm quietly confident for the night ahead. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get back to you during the hours of darkness. This morning, got a small one there, ready for pictures. This one felt a bit bigger, but we're in a bit of weed at the minute. It's only problem down this end, a lot of weed. But I think we're on for a few more. It goes to show that what we were saying yesterday has paid off. I was expecting a bite when the sun was down, either during the night or early morning. And now it's about seven o'clock in the morning. We've got another, our second bite but it's weeded, so. Barbers hooks. Normally I'd put the rod down, let the fish swim out the weed. But if I put the rod down, let, let the fish swim out the weed doing this with a barbless hook, trying to say I'll lose it. So I'm gonna keep a bit of pressure on for a bit. And see what I can do. No doubt we'll find some more weed, but I think we're pretty safe at the minute. Look at that, kicking up. Kick out the way, so that fizzing behind it. Got another mirror. It's going right where I don't want it to go in the reeds. This one's a much bigger fish. Oh, and that's the one. I'm happy with that. Looks like a really nice fish, that one. Oh, not as big as a fault, but it's a nice fish. Bigger than a last one. Lake. As predicted, we've got our morning bite. It's one of two. This is the first one. Looks like a nice mid double. And yeah, got caught in the weed, stuck in the weed for a bit, but we've got it out. But we'll get the other one out now to show you. The other one's a lot better, I think, and a little bit bigger. So, it's a feisty one. Put her back, show the other one. This one out, a lot bigger than the last one. 26 pound, 12 ounces of horseshoe mirror. Now, after this bite, it got weeded as well, but it, it gave me quite a ruck. And since then, I've not seen much action. So it could be another hour of quietness and then the sun will come out and it could be game over. But it just goes to show location. Only with one night on a big lake like this, it can pay off as long as you get on the fish. So I'm gonna slip this one back. Maybe get another one, but either way, I'm a happy man. Quickly show the other side. It's a feisty one, so we're gonna put her back as soon as we can. But see if she'll let us hold us, hold her up for one more. There you go. Lovely fish. Let's put her back. Well, we've come to the end of the session now. It's about 10 o'clock, the sun's up. When I got here yesterday, it was overcast and there was a lot of activity. It looked good for a bite, but now, it looks like the chance of a bite have long gone. So that was two fish this morning. 
just goes to show that being on the fish in a short space of time, usually in my own fishing, I'm getting there Friday, I'm going home Sunday, so I've got two nights, but on this session, I've got one night, I've just done that, and it's easily, you can easily see that it was a morning bite opportunity. So that's passed now, so we're gonna start getting the rods in. I'm pretty much packed up, traveling light, mobile, so I've got no, nothing to pack up now. So if I was staying another night, I'd probably move further down the bank, have a go down there, or I'd, if it was my chosen water, I'd have friends on here and I'd go and have a cup of tea, but I'd bring my lines in, rest it all day, let them fish come back in, gain confidence, and I'll put my rods back out this evening, ready for another morning bite. If it was another water I'd be coming back to, like usual, I fish weekends, like every weekend, then if I'd just done my two nights, I'd have leftover bait, and I'd, I've caught off one, one spot in this swim, so now I know that one spot, as a carp has fed on it, I'll put the rest of my bait in, whether it's two, three kilos of boilie, on that one spot. And then Friday, I'll be back after work and I'll come straight back to this swim. It's already prepped. It's got some bait on the spot. I know I've caught a fish from there before. And then it's pre-baited during the week. So I'll plan for the next, the next session. So I'll put the bait in now, go away, come back, and I've got something to go on. It's usually Friday evening, late after work, so you ain't got much time to walk about and find fish like I did when I got here yesterday. So I've got something to go on. If I didn't catch next week off that baited spot, then I'll think about moving. But yeah, that's me insight into turn up to a new water. I gave you a few tips. Obviously, you can listen to the local knowledge and stuff, but it's better to see with your own eyes and find out things for yourself. And I'm really happy with how this session's gone. I set out a plan. I told you what was going to happen, and it's happened. So it's been a good session. I'm going to pack my kit up now, head off back to Essex. And yeah, one day I'd like to return to Horseshoe Lake. It's a lovely water, some lovely carp in here. But until then, we'll see you next time.